This is a lesson from our character animator animation course. To get the full course, go to blueanimation.com slash character animator animation. In this video, we're going to look at a cool new feature of character animator called characterizer. Characterizer is a tool that lets you automatically generate a puppet based on your own face. Let's see how it works. Here on the start screen, we can use this button to open characterizer. So the first thing we need to do is capture a set of images of our face. If I had done that previously, that set would show up here. But since I have not, we need to start by creating a new capture with this button here. Now when I click this, it's going to launch a handy guide that's going to walk us through the character capture process. Welcome to Characterizer. We're going to walk through a short process to capture your facial features. I'll ask you to make facial expressions and repeat specific words. Please say each word clearly and expressively. Keep your face centered in the camera preview image. Click Start Capture to begin. Then I'll go ahead and click Start Capture. I want to get my face close enough that it fills this oval. And then let's go ahead and start. Look at the camera lens and make a neutral expression in 3, 2, 1. Close your eyes in 3, 2, 1. Open your eyes and smile in 3, 2, 1. Frown in 3, 2, 1. Make a surprised expression in 3, 2, 1. Repeat after me. Adobe. Adobe. Photoshop. Photoshop. Lightroom. Lightroom. Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! And you can see it used all those words to get the mouth positions for the various syllables. Now we just click continue. Great job! Your characterizer capture is now being created. Your next step is to pick a style to apply to your capture, and then adjust the settings. So there we go. We've got our set of images up here. And just like it said, we need to now apply a style to it. These are all the default styles that you can apply. So for example, if I select this one, it's going to try to make our face look like it was painted in that same style. So you have settings up here to adjust how the style gets applied. The stylization setting determines how much of a mix of the two images it's going to try to do. So if you go lower with the stylization, it's going to end up looking kind of more like yourself. And if you go the other way with it, it's going to end up looking more like the image that it used to derive the style. I want it to look a little bit more like me. Let's go a little lower with it. Let's just leave it somewhere in the middle. Now feature exaggeration lets you distort the image if you don't want it to look quite like yourself. So you can sort of caricaturize your face. Let's leave that at zero. And then what cycles will do is it will actually create a set of images for each image and like animate through them. So when the character is in motion, this will kind of look like it's being, you know, painted frame by frame. That effect probably works better with some of these like sketchy styles. So if we try applying this one, you can imagine if this was actually drawn frame by frame, it would end up with this kind of um, breathing texture to it. And then you can also set the resolution of the images that it's generating. Let's go with kind of the medium value of 720. 
Now keep in mind that the higher your resolution and the higher your quality setting, the larger the images are gonna be and the slower it's going to be to generate the images and the more it's going to bog down your computer trying to actually use those in Character Animator. Then you also have the option to just generate the head and ignore the body. But let's go ahead and bring the body with it. And then we also have the option to auto-generate uh, right and left three-quarter head turns. It does a pretty good job of that, so I would actually recommend doing that. Now keep in mind you also have the option to go with no style as well if you just want a puppet of photos of your face. So it's rendered out our first head position. And if we want to see what a different position will look like, we just need to scroll to it and let it do its rendering. And when we're satisfied that it's going to look right, we can go ahead and hit Generate Puppet. Now this is going to take a while since I had that Cycles option set to 4. It's got to create 4 images for each of the facial positions. So at this point, you just got to sit back and let it do its thing. So here we are back in Character Animator with our newly built puppet. And from here, you can apply all of the skills that we've already gone through. For example, we can change all of our behavior parameters. Like We can set our eye gaze to the keyboard. And... I think the eyebrows are a little out of control here, so let's bring down the eyebrow strength to, say, 50. There, that's more reasonable. And if we want, we can even go into the Photoshop document that it's generated and customize things by hand. So we would just go to Reveal in Finder, and you can see there's a Photoshop document there. And it's set up just like how we're familiar with. So one last thing worth pointing out is that it automatically gives you two triggers. It gives you an F trigger to do a frown. And it gives you a B trigger to do the blink. Now obviously you can go into your puppet and set up any other triggers you want, but those it gives you by default. So those are the basics of using Characterizer. Next, we're going to look at how we can set up our own style to apply to Characterizer puppets.